I'm Dr. Herbert Bailey, and this is my wife, Dr. Marsha Bailey. I'm known to challenge you in your faith, and she's known to encourage you to never give up. But ultimately, we're here to give you practical steps to get positive results in your life. Heading in the right direction. 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 Today's message is it's already prepared by Dr. Herbert Bailey. First Corinthians second chapter verse nine. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. This is not a funeral scripture. This is not a funeral processional. This is not a scripture about how things are going to be when we get to heaven. This is a scripture that is very much for the, for the alive and for the living. Paul writes and says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, even haven't entered the heart of man. That means we haven't even thought about it or pondered about it. The things which God hath what? Prepared, come on, for them that love him. And if you have your own paper Bible, I encourage you to highlight that. You know, if, if, even though, uh, if, even in my, uh, in my Bible that I have in my iPad, uh, I'm able to highlight things in here. So, so even, even through my digital Bible, I have things highlighted. That means I want you, that this should strike a chord with you. I want, you need to remember it. It's something that I believe will, is, will, will impact your life forever if you remember this. And one thing I want you to remember is that God hath prepared God hath prepared for them that love him. And then he says, but God hath revealed them, okay? Them is referring to the things that eyes haven't seen. Them is referring to them things that ears haven't heard of. Them is referring to the things that uh, have entered the heart of man. Those things which God has prepared for us, God has revealed them to us by what? By his spirit. So God reveals things to us by what? By his spirit. So God reveals things to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Another translation says, the spirit searches the secrets of God. So God reveals his secrets. Now, secrets, you know, we, that has a whole lot of connotations to it. But, uh, but the, the word secret and mysteries is used interchangeably, particularly in the Greek and, and the New Testament. So when the Bible says that, that uh, when we pray in tongues, 1 Corinthians 14, chapter, how be in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. He speaketh mysteries. What that means is secrets. Secrets, and who's a secret from? It's not a secret from us. It's a secret from the world. It's a secret from Satan, okay? In the same context, earlier in 1 Corinthians 2nd second, second chapter, it told me the things and how God had planned for, uh, for Jesus and what was going to be done through Jesus. And it said, had they had the principalities of this world known it, talking about satanic demonic forces, have they had, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Why? It was a secret. Now watch it. It wasn't a secret to Isaiah because Isaiah wrote about it, okay? And, it, and, and said, he's wounded, foul, transgression, bruised, foul, iniquity, chest, tied, and robbed, pieces upon him. It wasn't a secret to David. David wrote about it. Thou will not leave my soul in hell, okay? Uh, it wasn't a secret to Jesus. He, and he spoke to them in code, and he said to them, if you destroy this, this, this body in three, in three days, I, I'll restore this temple. They thought he was talking about Solomon's temple, okay? And so the, the, what, what's called secrets is not, is not secrets to, for, to us. They're secrets for us. They're not secrets from us. They're secrets for us. So God has revealed them secrets, them things that eyes, that natural eyes haven't seen, them things that natural ears haven't heard, them things that natural people have not thought about or pondered about, them things, the things that God has prepared for us, he's revealed them to us by his spirit. So this is not saying that when you, gotta, when you get to heaven, God's going to show you all this stuff that we never had any idea that we had. That's not what it's saying. Are y'all with me here? It's saying that those things that are hidden from the world, God wants to reveal them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth 
all things, yea, the deep things or deep secrets of God. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the, except the spirit that is within him. No, this is, saying, this is saying that your spirit knows more than your head knows. We all know that. You're not, you're not conscious about it because you know your head can be telling you to do something, and what do you say? Something down here just don't feel right. Right? What, what, what are you saying? My spirit knows more than my head knows. Now, this makes sense to my head, but something in my spirit is telling me not to go ahead. You know, we sing a song, something down inside of me telling me to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sometimes I got something down in my spirit telling me, don't go ahead, don't move, okay? So it says, so the spirit of a man knoweth what is in man. Likewise, or even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the what? But the Spirit. Now, that Spirit is talking about the Holy Spirit. And what he's saying is that the Holy Spirit will reveal things to us about God and what he has that we otherwise would not know. Y'all with me? Now we, have not, now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but we have received the Spirit, which is of God, that we might know what? The things that are freely given to us of God. So this scripture is telling us that there are things your natural eyes have not seen. There are things your natural ears have not heard. There are things that you haven't even thought about, pondered about, meditated on, or considered. It said, but, but God has revealed them things to us, or will reveal them things to us by his spirit. And he's saying the things that God wants to reveal are things, according to verse 9, which he has prepared he has already prepared for them that love him. And so the subject of this teaching I want to start tonight is simply called, it's already prepared. Say that. Say, it's already prepared. Now, if we could just get this, you will always have peace. If you could really understand this, you will never worry. I learned a new word when I came to South Carolina. You will never be full of worryation. I never heard that word that came to South Carolina. And then I heard several people use it. I said, it must be a word down here. <laughs> How many of y'all heard that word? Worration. It sounds like it could be a nice word. Okay. All right. Uh, you'll never be full of worration. You won't have anxiety. You won't have fear about your future. If we can just get it settled, that is already prepared. Glory to God. It's already prepared. And it's saying just because you have not seen it, just because you haven't heard about it, and just because you haven't thought about it doesn't mean that God hasn't already prepared it, that God hasn't heard about it, and that, and that it's not already on God's heart. It's already prepared. He said, now, and the more that we walk in the Spirit, and the more we're led by the Spirit, the more glimpses and revelation that God will give us about things He's already prepared. You know, when I was meditating on this, I, I, I prepared this and studied and meditated, and I was riding, the, I was riding to, uh, here for noon, noon Bible study, and, uh, and I was meditating on this, and this, this is what I said to myself when, after meditating on this. Every time I say something to God like, God, I need a lot of money to do what you call me to do. God says, duh. You're not getting this. Every time I'm telling God what I need to do whatever, God, God's, God's responds like, oh, really? Duh, that's what duh me. Because you don't know duh me. Like, that's stupid. So, God tells me to build a building for the children, and I say, God, I need $2 million to build this building. And God says, really? I never thought about that. Oh, my goodness. Never mind. <laughs> Don't do it then, because I didn't realize it was going to take that. In other words, whatever God called you to do, whatever he chooses you to do, he already has everything prepared that you need to get it done. I'm jumping ahead of myself, which is why Jesus says in, in, Matthew, in, uh, in Matthew 6, take no thought. 
You stop thinking about it. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall wear, what you shall put on. For after all these things, the, the Gentiles seek or the people that, that don't have the spirit of God worry about because your father already knows that you have what? Need of all these things. Now, now you got to get this. You got to get this. God does not haphazardly do anything. God does not do anything without forethought. Nothing happens that God has to say, man, I didn't think about that. Nothing happens where God said, let, let me back up. because let, let, let me put this on pause. I can, let me figure this out. Are, are y'all with me here? Whatever he's going to do is already prepared, thought of well in advance before it ever entered your mind. So when it says that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, it, neither have into the heart of men things that God have revealed, uh, has prepared for us, but then God's revealed them to us by His Spirit. So what happens is that by the time God reveals it to us, He's already got it prepared. It's already taken care of. Okay? Let me, I, I, I know some, y'all look at me like a cow at a new gate tonight. Okay? Um, God's not thinking to do anything. <laughs> no, we say God, I'm thinking to. God's not thinking to do anything. Whatever God is going to do, he's, it's already done. Miles Monroe one time put it this way. God never starts what he's not already finished. Okay? Another scripture puts it this way. He established the ending at the beginning. It's already prepared. So the problem with us is that we are only looking at things that eyes have seen, ears haven't heard things that I've thought about. So we think if I haven't seen it, if I haven't heard it, if I haven't thought about it, it, it can't be done or, or it doesn't exist. Your thoughts are afterthought to God's thoughts. All right, let me, let me move on. Okay, let, let's deal with this prepare. And then you have to go to the dictionary for this. Then you have to look it up. Then you have to Google it. Then you have to pull out the dictionary. I already know what prepared means. When I give you my definition of prepared, everybody here is going to agree. Prepared means to make it ready ahead of time. Anybody disagree with that? Prepared means to make ready ahead of time. Put it another way, it means to set up in advance or to arrange in advance. Okay? So when we say that God has already prepared everything. It's already prepared. That means God's already made, made it ready ahead of time. God's already set it up ahead of time. God's already arranged things ahead of time. Oh, well, well, that's, I, I, I'm not even trying to be profound when I say that. He did it ahead of time. I know I'm going to it. He did it ahead of time. Before time ever existed, he did it. Now, the problem is God operates in eternally, we operate in time. Which is, which is why the Bible says until we start walking in the Spirit, we can't grasp God doing things, having things, preparing things outside of time. God does things, okay, follow the first, you can follow it. God does things in eternity, it manifests in time. Okay. Now, now I'm, I'm in the book, I ain't being weird now. Okay. I know I'm usually simpler than this. I'm trying to, get, I'm trying to make a little, someone say, you have to go deep on this now. He's been hanging around Bishop Page. Okay. Um, when was Jesus slain? Ah, somebody get, he was slain when? 
before the foundation of the world. That's what the Bible says. He was slain, crucified, before the foundation of the world. When did time begin? When the world began? But God existed outside of time. And Jesus, the Bible said, was slain from the foundation of the world. So it happened before we ever saw it. I know some of y'all looking at me. He was slain before it happened in time two years ago. But it happened in eternity before time began. If you can grasp this, nothing is a surprise to God. Nothing takes God, God off God that he says, I didn't think about that. Mm, didn't plan for that. He tells us to do that. So if he tells us to plan, I'm jumping way ahead of myself. One of the scriptures says, he said, who intended to build a tower without first sitting down and doing what? counting up the car. So you, do you really think that God put you on, on the earth, brought you into the kingdom of God, tells you to do whatever you're going to do, tells you to marry whoever, gives you these children, and he has not pre-thought this thing. You stressing, stressing out about what God's already prepared. Now, I'm not sure how, how true this is, but uh, uh, I got ready in, I guess, my sophomore year to go into ROTC and go into the Army. I was mad because my mother was complaining, okay? She was talking about, uh, uh, you know, I, even back then, I didn't have all the revelations, but I didn't want student, I didn't want student loans. And so with the, the, the Board of Trustees scholarship, whatever, whatever they didn't pay, initially my first year, second year, my mother was paying, paying it, the difference. Then, then she started complaining. I don't have all this money to send you to college. And I'm, so I told Bishop Bell, I said, I'm going to join the Army. He said, boy, you don't need to go join the Army. He said, he said, you, you know your mother. She already, she's complaining, but boy, she's been planning for you to go to college long before you thought about going to college. Now, one thing she knew, you were going to go to college. She said, so don't, don't even listen to that. She, she already prepared for you to do this. Now, she was complaining about it, but according to him, she had already prepared it. She prepared it. I'm stressing out about something that I'm thinking we're trying to figure out how we go, but she had prepared it. That's a mother. That was, that was a mother. Now, my father, we ain't going to talk about him. He didn't prepare nothing. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. It was the 3rd of December. You got to be old enough to even know what I'm talking about. Don't, you, don't, you don't even know, don't even worry about it. All, you millennials. But he was a rolling stone. And when he died, all he left us was a long. Boom, boom. Yeah. Okay. He didn't prepare nothing. But my, but my mother had prepared. The more spiritually mature we become and the more we grow in our relationship with, with the Lord, the more we should rest in assurance that God has already prepared everything we will need for our lives. Now, as long as you're walking in the flesh and only seeing things from the natural, you're always going to be stressed. But that's why the scripture says, we have not received the spirit of the world. What is one of the spirits that's, in, that, that, that's, that's the spirit of the world? Ah, the spirit of fear. That's so the Bible says, God has not given us, his children, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. The spirit of fear is the spirit of the world. What, what, what does 1 John say? He that fears is not made perfect in love. Why? Because perfect or perfected love 
casts out, now the scripture says, expels all fear. Now, what that scripture means, it says, when you know without any doubt, I love God and he loves me, I know I'm going to be all right. It expels. If, if I get secure in the love of God, I know I love him and I know he loves me. That if he don't love nobody else on earth, he love himself some. Some Herbert. Got to put your name in there. If you get secure in that, it casts out fear. It gets rid of worry. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so the more spiritual we become, the more we grow in our relationship with the Lord, the more we should rest in children that God has already taken care of everything we're going to need for our lives. Ephesians 1 and 3. Let's look at a couple of foundational scriptures that tell us that God already has it prepared. Blessed be the Father, excuse me, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hath already. Remember I told you God's not fitting, God, God not fitting to bless you. He's not fitting to bless you. He hath blessed you. So, you're not, you're not blessed because you got a car. You got a car because you're blessed. You didn't catch this. You're not blessed because you get a house. You got the house because you're blessed. We call the blessings being blessed. No, you're blessed, so the blessings, oh, well, I'm going to go a little deep here. The blessed things got to show up because I'm already blessed. I'm already blessed. When I was broke, I was blessed. The blessings hadn't shown up yet. Okay. Just like right now, you ain't broke. You just between paychecks. I mean, you got to change how you talk about this thing right now. When I, first, when, when, when I first started grabbing hold to these principles, you know, uh, b- before I knew better, I would have told my children when they were small, well, well we, we, you know, we don't have any money. And then I start changing. We don't have money for that. That's not a priority. I got money. I don't have money for that. No. I mean, you 10, I don't have money to buy you a $100 pair of sneakers at which you being 10. <laughs> don't have money for that. Got money, but not for that. I just changed my, I, 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 told, I told y'all what, what, what my son Daniel did. Daniel was always asking for new sneakers. And uh, Daniel made up his mind, I'll never be broke again another day in my life regarding sneakers. That boy starts, starts just putting money aside, saving quarters. And then every, every couple months or once a month, he come in and say, hey, Dad, Dad can, can, you, can, can you give me some money for these quarters? He'd come bring me $30 worth of quarters. Really, he would. He would am I right? He, he, would, he, would just, he would just save his money. But, but I had said one time, I said, I said, I'm, t- I said, I'm getting you any sneakers now. I said, you, you don't need any. There's nothing wrong with the sneakers you got. I said, now, come see me when something wrong with those. So I was looking out the window one day, and he was down in the street going. I'll fix you. I'll make something wrong with these. God has everything you need just waiting for you to claim it. You have to believe that he already has your necessities and desires taken care of. Dr. Herbert Bailey encourages you that it's already prepared in this timely message. Order these resources today for your love gift of $15 or more. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. Ask for It's Already Prepared. It's celebration time at Right Direction Church International. You are God of all the earth. We're celebrating 19 years of kingdom impact with a concert featuring JJ Hairston and youthful praise. And sing of your marvelous works. 
Don't miss our 19th church anniversary concert featuring J.J. Hairston and Youthful Praise at Right Direction Church International. Come experience an awesome night of praise, worship, and celebration on Sunday, April 26th at 6 p.m. Yes, you are the Lord of all. Join us at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. Don't miss the celebration at Right Direction Church International with J.J. Hairston and Youthful Praise. For more information, call 877-798-LIFE or log on to rightdirection.info. What is manhood? Is it my job? Is it my money? Is it my sport? Is it my habit? Nah, it's gotta be more than that. It's my heart. It's my strength. I am man. It's my faith. It's my focus. I am man. It's my love. It's my character. It's who I am. I am man. The Right Direction Men's Conference 2015, MOD. Next time on Daily Direction. God doesn't have to say, man, I wasn't expecting to have this many children. God's not going on quick. He's not applying for welfare. He's not denying you so he don't have to pay child support. All of us are his children. We've been created in Christ Jesus unto good works, and he prepared for us to be here. If you are in our area, come join us at one of our three locations. In Columbia, South Carolina, Sunday morning worship is at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Wednesday Bible study is at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Friday women's Bible study is at 12 noon. Our worship center is located at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Trey and Katie Brave for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 990 Willington Drive in Orangeburg. In Florence, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Dwayne and Denise White for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 1507 King Avenue in Florence. Please email your testimonies to praise report at rightdirection.info or letters can be mailed to P.O. Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina 29221. Please consider partnering with us or send a one time financial gift. For more information, visit our website at rightdirection.info or call us toll free at 877 798 5433. Right Direction Ministries, empowering people and changing generations.